Let's move on to the other issues of the day now and bring in the panel. Amanda Rose, who's the founder of Small Business Women Australia and the Radio 2 C breakfast host in the nation's capital, Stephen Senatiempo. Thanks both for joining us. Hey, Chris. I, I want to start off on uh, national security and this uh, astounding situation where we've got one of the most notorious Islamist extremist terrorists ever arrested in this country actually being driven out of jail today. I think we've got the pictures today of him being released today. This is the bloke who was involved in plots to blow up the MCG uh, and other important targets, including military bases. Uh, he's only going to be under these control orders or surveillance and reporting measures for, for another 12 months, Stephen. This is uh, a really worrying time and challenging one for our security agencies. Yeah, no two ways about it. And I think it's, it's starting, we're starting to see a pattern here that maybe we're not as secure as we once thought we were. And we may need our legislators to take a serious look at our, our security legislation to make sure that people like this are not um, uh, running rampant through the community. Now, I, I, look, I understand that everybody, when they do their time, they've got to move on. But, I mean, surely a bloke that um, was convicted of um, the, uh, the, ver the crimes that he was uh, needs to be under some greater scrutiny um, moving forward. I, I don't know... Look, from a legislative perspective, I don't know exactly what needs to be done, but hopefully there's smarter people than me looking at this. Yeah, look, it's a hell of a worrying situation, Amanda. Uh, look, there's been a lot of studies, a lot of work on these so-called de-radicalisation programs. The, the short, short answer to them is they don't work. If you're a committed Islamist extremist, uh, uh, that's, that's kind of... You, you're kind of set in those beliefs. And this comes at a time when we've had people chanting death to the Jews and gas the Jews on our streets. Uh, it's a worrying situation indeed. And I hope our security organisation and police forces are right onto this. Well, it is definitely going to keep them on their toes. And look, I do believe that once you've done your time, that you should be able to move forward. Um, but under the circumstances, they're obviously wanting to monitor. But I'm also very cautious that they don't use a situation like this to justify bringing in legislation that is going to be even more strict and so bad that they can question everyday citizens on, under a simple suspicion that they're up to something. So there needs to be a balance here that they don't say, right, we need to bring in this new law. So every single person that we think is doing something that we think is potentially along these lines, that we can lock them up, we can put a tag on them, we can watch every single thing that they text and email. Yeah, no, we don't want uh, any more infringements of civil liberties, that's for sure. But uh, I, I think we've been a bit too complacent about Islamist extremism in this country and yes. hopefully uh, we, we, our security agents haven't. Let's go to the, the wonderful world of politics now. And it, it never gets dull in Australia. <laughs> Stephen, we've, we've lost, lost a chief minister today. The chief minister of the Northern Territory uh, has bitten the dust. Uh, a handful of, um, of shares that uh, her explanation is she didn't really notice them. They came through her BHP shares, but... I reckon because they're related to the evil, uh, uh, the evil uh, climate damaging industry, Stephen, yeah. that's the reason these have been so sensitive. Yeah, and, and I think that's right because the the, the difference here is that uh, we've seen this kind of thing happen before, particularly at a federal level in recent times, and it's always nothing to see here. Now everything's fine. It was just a mistake. But I just I think it just shows the arrogance and complacency of our political class now that they think they can get away with this or think they can get away with not having to. Um, I guess be as um, as careful with their shareholdings as the codes of conduct insist that they are. Um, look, I've got to say I'm very surprised that Natasha Files has actually uh, resigned over this, but uh, I think uh, it's a maybe it's a it's a, a good precedent that some of our other politicians might actually wake up to themselves. Yeah, kind of. I think it's a good sign too, Amanda, that uh, a Labor chief minister owns some shares. Uh, so probably rather than just in her <laughs> industry super, she might actually pay attention to what's happening in business and industry. Let's, before I get your thoughts, Amanda, let's just have a look at what uh, Natasha Files had to say today. It is clear that I have failed to meet the standards that are set for us and the standards that I set for myself. And I'm not going to make any excuses for that. So for this reason... I believe the honourable course of action is to resign as Chief Minister. Yeah, there you go, Amanda. She's a, she's a share owner. That, that's a good thing for Labor, isn't she? Although she didn't well, seem to know what was happening with those well, shares. Well, well, I've got so much to say, right? But the, the thing is, 
If we actually looked at every single politician and what they do and don't have, I think there's a few hundred more that should be quitting. But what I actually like was the fact that she, how she handled it. So, yes, we all make mistakes. And, yes, you're right, you know, they Labor claim to be for the working class and they might have shares. But it's all about how do you handle when you handle a situation when you make a mistake. And to me, how she handled it was quite honourable and it showed a, a lot of character. There are plenty of people that have literally dodged so many things and lied and, you know, used the media to their advantage to get away with it, but she didn't. And I say, good on her for quitting and getting on with her life because politics isn't everything. Yeah, but hang on. She only, she only yeah, handled yeah, that good way because she got I mean, caught. For, for, yeah. Well, she got caught. And because obviously the factions in the Labor Party told her she had to go, she didn't make a good fist of it. It was a bit like um, Anastasia Palaszczuk the other week. She said she she said all the right things on the way out, except that they, that they ignored the fact that she'd been told she had to go. But uh, I tell you yeah. what, I suppose it's not that hard either. If you own shares and you own houses or uh, or you have... You, know, you just got to declare them. You just put them on a bit of paper. Oh, I agree. It's, it's I, th I agree. not that hard and... Absolutely agree with that, Chris. But the thing is, it was $2,500 worth of shares, which, you know, is quite small. But what I'm saying is let's put yeah. that exact filter across every other politician because it seems to me someone yeah. wanted her gone, they found something and they got rid of her. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Well, there. I'll tell you what, a big works. story. I'm sitting, I'm broadcasting from... I'm broadcasting from Adelaide tonight and uh, and the opposition leader here uh, was outed for having 13 investment properties. And apparently, you know, some people view that as a sin, but, you know, I'm envious, but uh, it shows he knows how, how the property market works anyway. Now, Stephen, I've got to get your <laughs> thoughts uh, also on these IR laws. Uh, a lot of people hmm. saying that the Senate has sold out small business and medium-sized business and big business in this country. I think this is the sleeper for Labor because the, those laws are coming into place, a big power grab by the unions. We're going to see this filter through the economy and, and slow us down through next year, I would have thought. Yeah, and, well, there's no question they've uh, they've sold out small, particularly small and medium business, but also some big businesses. But this was driven by the unions from day one. Um, the, I always say beware the omnibus bill. Whenever they try to push through one of these bills that's got so much legislation in, I think it was like 700 pages long mm. or something like that, you know there's going to be something hidden in there. And that was the case from day one. But what really disappoints me here is the likes of David Pocock and Jackie Lambie, who made mm. all the right noises in the early stages of this and said, look, let's separate out the less contentious stuff and, and push that through. And there was some good stuff in there about protecting first responders and the like, but then they accepted everything else as well. So what was the point of it? They didn't consult business. Right. I know that master builders were screaming at them and didn't, it yeah. wouldn't be, they could, wouldn't listen to them. All the business organisations were screaming and weren't listening to them. It was all yeah. about Labor being beholden to their union masters. Yeah. Yeah, let me just quickly go to you. We're nearly out of time, Amanda, but your interest in small business, in a nutshell, what's the problem here? Well, it was an absolute betrayal of small business, what the deal that was made, that, you know, independent senators or small, you know, party senators, they're supposed to actually speak to the small business owners and the associations and advocate on their behalf. That did not happen. They were flattered by Labor. They thought they were heroes by getting this through. They're not. They're actually hurting a lot of businesses and a lot of small businesses will be hurt by this. Everything that's gone through already, it's going to have an impact Indeed. one to three years. Amanda and Stephen, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for being part of the program thanks, all year. And uh, we'll catch you in 2024. Thank you. See you then.